Hey, Tribe family, welcome to Life Groups on Sunday morning. For those of you who cannot be at the JWAC, uh, this is just a little kickoff to maybe your study through what you read this week. So take out your Bibles. We're going to look real quick at Luke chapter 9. All right. Just a little conversation, a little talk about maybe what you learned in your reading this week. Um... Hopefully, you've been reading, uh, and if you would, um, if you've been following with the Tribe Dailies uh, and the Midweeks and things like that on our YouTube channel, we also post on Instagram, but we know a lot of students don't have an Instagram page, they don't have cell phones, but your parents may let you hang out on the internet on YouTube. And so if you would, uh, like and share all of our programs, uh, it's an opportunity for you to get the word out to some of your friends. Uh, it's not the only way to share the gospel because we would hope that you wouldn't just rely on us to uh, evangelize and proclaim that Jesus is King. We hope that with your words and your actions and your attitudes and your behaviors that everything about you is proclaiming the truth that Jesus is King who came and died to take away the sins of the world, came to take away the sins of his people. And you are inviting your friends and everyone that you come in contact with you're inviting them to follow King Jesus because it's the only, he is the only true God. He's the only true King to follow. Everything else is false. Everything else is a lie. And everything else will ultimately lead to death. Period. Full stop. And I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying that with, ooh, I hope you understand. Guys, here, here's the, here's the, here's the purpose of an evangelist. It is not to convince people to follow the king. It's to proclaim that we have a king and to proclaim that we are to follow him. Um, and, I, and I know that by hearing me say that, some of you may say, it's just so firm and that's so... An evangelist went, a, a herald of the good news went down the streets and everywhere he went his purpose was to proclaim jesus is king and he has conquered the enemies the king is conquered follow him also it's an invitation to his enemies to repent of your enemy thinking and follow jesus follow the king and you are part of the kingdom what an incredible message. You don't have to try to work up some sales pitch to convince somebody that everything is true. Jesus is king. It's true. Proclaim that and call people to follow him. Ask people to follow him and respond by following him. Uh, you know, this week we talked about that one of the ways that you know people are following him is they're denying themselves, taking up their cross and following him. They're as followers of Christ, we should be Jesus promoters, Jesus heralds, Jesus proclaimers, not self-promoters. In fact, we should do that in such a way that the world would say, it looks like you're denying yourself. Okay, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I'm fine taking a backseat to Jesus because uh, I'm in his vehicle. It's his vehicle. Everything's his anyway. <laughs> Does it make sense? Now, today in Luke chapter 9, I'm going to read this section of scripture. And then in the tribe trackers that we gave out at Life Groups uh, this week, I'm going to read a couple of questions that you might want to write in your journals. And if you're not getting your journals, we gave out journals to everyone uh, that came to Life Groups. And if you have not been able to come back yet but want one, can you just please contact us so we can send you a, a journal that you can write in and take notes in. And if you fill that journal up, uh, what we promise to do is to give you another one free of charge. Um, because we want you to get in the habit of not only reading scripture, which is primary, hearing the word of God, reading the word of God. We want you to get to where you write and take notes and, and let the word speak to you and, and communicate with you. And then as, as, as the Lord reveals things to you through his word, you write them down to remember them. All right. Does that make sense? Because it's really important. You actually remember better the things you write down. That's one of the reasons I write a lot of stuff. Sometimes the stuff I write you can't understand. It's just all over the place. But I'm writing down to help me stay focused with it. So here's where we are today. Jesus is praying. And now you noticed, I think it was uh, Friday, um, Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Why? Because the disciples saw Jesus praying a lot. And what an example. Since we follow Christ, we should follow his example in praying. Now, 
I want to warn you, Jesus is not just an example to follow. He's a king. He's the Savior. He's God. To, we should worship, glorify him, serve him, deny ourselves for him. All right? He's just not a good teacher, and we should just follow his teachings. We should follow his teachings, but that's not all. We should worship him because he's God. All right? Just a couple facts there. Hardcore stuff. All right. So here's what it says. So, so now it happened that as he was praying alone, the disciples were with him. And he asked them this question. Here's the question Jesus asked his disciples. Who do the crowds, you know, those crowds that gather around and follow him and and he brings the sick and, and, and they actually enjoy the food and when he does a miracle and feeds everybody, they're just showing up like crazy. Sometimes I wonder if people follow Jesus because they wanted to see what the next magic trick was or the, he's the new show in town or he's so good. He may, he's, he's so different. Or sometimes they followed him because he talked. He was the guy that just kind of always had he, he, he taught a different way than they've ever heard before. And some people just get excited about that. It doesn't mean they're going to follow. It doesn't mean they're going to do. They just like somebody that's cutting edge, somebody that's oh different than the norm. And Jesus basically saying, when I look at his teaching, it's almost like he's like, I'm teaching the norm. I'm teaching the thing that, that God spoke through the Old Testament, people. This is not new news, all right? This is the same old good news that's been proclaimed since Genesis. And Jesus basically said, this is it, all right? And he said, who do the crowds say that I am? Who are they saying that I am? And look, and look, at, what they, look at what his disciples say to him. And they answered him, John the Baptist. Because at this time, John has been beheaded and he is dead. But some people are saying it's like John has come back in the form of another person, that Jesus. And so that's interesting because John said his purpose was to point to Jesus. And now the crowd, some of the crowd is saying, I think... I think Jesus is just a reincarnate John the Baptist. Come. And it's like, dude, totally missed it. Swing. Whoosh, miss. Because John came to point to Christ. In fact, in other gospels, John is saying, I must decrease and Jesus must increase. And so, But some of the people said John the Baptist. But others say Elijah. And others that you're one of the prophets of old who has risen. And it blows my mind. But we're guilty of this. In the first century, the people were basically saying, we know the prophets. We know John the Baptist. We love their teaching. And Jesus is just like them. He's, he's basically them walking around. Something happened. Supernatural's happening. And, and he's basically Elijah or, or John the Baptist. And what's incredible is all the prophets, John included, proclaim Jesus. And they have the one they were proclaiming. They have him with them and it's it's so incredible it's so incredible sad i would say that the people who were literally in the presence of god the son of god put on flesh they missed it the one that the prophets and john the baptizer were pointing and proclaiming they were in his presence and they missed it <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that so interesting right, let's settle on that for a second and then look what came after this. And he said, some said the prophets of old that have risen. Then he said, then he said to them, to the disciples, but who do you, disciples, who do you say that I am? And Peter, who usually sometimes would pop off at the mouth, called ready, fire, aim. Peter said something that was right on target. Peter said, you're the Christ of God. That's amazing. And look what happened. And then in Luke, you see that Jesus is in commanding and instructing his people to tell no one yet. And you may wonder why that is. Well, there, you can speculate, okay? Um, some people would say it's because it wasn't, quite, it wasn't quite the time for that message to get out there. Uh, it wasn't quite time for Jesus to reveal that or the Son of God to reveal that to the world, but just to his disciples. And so I want you to think about that, all right? Because look at this, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day raised. Did you see what Jesus just did there? Peter proclaimed exactly who Christ is. He's the Son of God. 
All right. He is the one sent from the Father. He's the Son of God put on flesh. And then Jesus says, this is what I'm to do. All right. Now look at what happens next. And he said to all, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. He says that. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that awesome? And so Jesus says, if you're going to, if you're going to come after me, you must deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. Because just earlier, look what he said. The son of man, Jesus, is saying, I must suffer. Whoa. And so he's telling him, if you're going to come after me, you must be willing to suffer. Many things. And Jesus said, and I'm going to be rejected by the elders and the chief priests, the, the, the influential people of the time, uh, the, the elders and the chief priests, those who actually stopped teaching the law of God from the Old Testament's teaching, and they were actually adding to it, I, I guess probably to help people understand better, but they were adding to the message. Uh, and so what Jesus is saying, those folks are going to want to kill me, but on the third day I'm going to raise from the dead. Wow, that's an incredible message. So here's the thing I want you to think about. As you continue looking over your reading, I want you to ask some questions, all right? In this section of Scripture, and I've got a low battery, so it might go dead on me here in just a second. And if it does, I'm sorry. In these sections of Scripture, you can ask the question, who wrote this passage? Dr. Luke, okay? And who is he? He's a doctor. What was he? Who is he writing it for? Those kind of things you ask this question. What is the message of this passage that Jesus is teaching and showing us and revealing as he's showing us this event. All right, what's the message here? That Jesus is the Son of God. All right, and he came for a purpose. When was it written? First century, early in the first century? What was the time frame? What was going on in that time of, of period? Because you have to understand what the scripture means there before you can know what it means here. Then it says, where was it written? So when you look at the area it was written in, it kind of helps you understand how that message landed and looked in light of that time frame. Why was it written? What was the purpose of writing this? And Jesus tells you his purpose is to proclaim that he's here to do the will of the Father. And then two more questions. How does this passage relate to the passages before and after? It's so important, students, as you study Scripture, to notice that. And finally, how can I apply this message to my life? So after you look at all of the information the background information, who, when, where, whatever, then you go, whatever it meant for them, I, it can't mean something different for me. And then here's the deal. Then you follow that and you proclaim that. Oh, today in Life Groups, I pray you'd spend time looking over the Word, guys. Spend time um, seeing what the Lord uh, has reminded you and showed you this week. And if you haven't read the passages of Scriptures, man, just stop today and spend time reading this week's reading just a few chapters. You can do it, I promise, all right? I love you guys. Let me pray for you. Lord, today, help us to love your word. Help us to obey your word. Help us to read your word. Help us to study your word. Help us to understand exactly what you mean, that you meant as you spoke it then, because you're speaking it now. Help us to proclaim with our life that we believe exactly who you say you are, and we will do what you tell us to do no matter what. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. Love you guys. I will see you Wednesday for midweek.